Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here and today with what? With a new topic and you've already seen the heading. Now this is something important again. And this is what? This is the topic of a capacitive filter or simply we call it a filter. The use of this topic is important. Why? Because uh, you know when we talked about the rectifier circuits, so I missed it over there. That's why I'm doing it a little late. I should have done it previously with the rectifiers. Anyways, so when we have a rectifier circuit, so the thing is that the rectifier gives you a DC output, right? Yes. But when you see the graph, you say, what sort of a DC is this? Full wave rectifier or a half wave rectifier. So that is something uh, not very, you know, appealing to us. Because when we hear the word DC, so something that comes in our mind is just a straight line. A constant DC. But the rectified output is what? It's a pulsating DC, which means that it is continuously changing its magnitude although it's not changing in its direction but it is changing its magnitude and if the magnitude is changing uh, still it is not of a very great importance so what we need to do is we need to convert that uh, pulsating dc into a pure dc and how do we do that well not pure it can be you know the, the efficiency could be very maximum but of course it could not be a pure straight DC level right and how do we do that so we do that with the help of filters and filters is what we just will have to we will just have to introduce a capacitor at the output of the rectifier now why do we do that because we, because the the most of the load the load appliances they run on direct current on dc right for example for instance i take the 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 the, the example of this camera charger right say maybe your mobile phone charger or this like things like that laptop chargers for instance simple ones so they run on dcs right so you have a transformer in there step down the voltage as well as well as you would have to convert them into dc rectifier is present over there but the pulsating dc is not our requirement the requirement is a pure dc so to run that electronic devices properly to give them the proper power and to properly bias electronic circuits now bias so biasing you will see in a great detail so, so for that we need a proper DC level, right? And this is what we do. So anyways, that is more of a talking. Let's get to something starting, uh, something written as well, right? Yes. So today's topic is what? It's filters. Let's say for instance, we talked about the rectifiers. So what was a rectifier doing? If I represent it with an R. So if for instance, I had this input signal, if I had this input signal as a sine wave, magnitude was changing, the direction was changing, I gave it to a rectifier circuit. So the rectifier circuit converted it into, let's say if I'm talking about the full wave rectifier, so it converted it into something like this. This is what I'm talking about was not of a great importance for us. Today, we convert it to something with the help of a filter represented by let's say an F. We, we convert it to something like this. Although it's not a straight line, although it's not a straight line, but in comparison to this, it's far greater far better far better right so so this is not perfect dc so what do we do we use the filters so today's topic is filters what will the filter do it will reduce the fluctuations it will reduce the fluctuations in the rectified output in the rectified output this is the rectified output 
right yes so filters can be employed uh, using what they could be employed using inductors or capacitors right yes so they could be used with the help of either inductors or capacitors so why are these two used because the inductor will oppose the sudden change of current this property similarly the capacitor would oppose the sudden change of voltage this is something you know very well so multiple combinations of these and you can have multiple type of filters for example you could have an inductive filter simply you could have a capacitive filter simply you can have a combination of the two lc you can have a capacitive lclc filter you could have a crc filter and multiple which is not the the scope of this not the content of this course for us the thing that we need over here is the c filter it's the capacitive filter that will do our job and will convert it into something like this right yes for instance considering a half wave rectifier considering a half wave rectifier a simple circuit let's say you have this source varying source vs plus minus you have a diode you have a load let me call this load as rl the output is taken across the terminals plus minus v output what do you do is this is a half wave rectifier right half wave rectifier what do i do is i just introduce a capacitor just introduce a capacitor in parallel over here and this has become a filtered output now right yes so how do that we have what we just understand it how is the working right how is the working so during the positive half cycle for instance let's say this blue color is representing my input waveform if this is representing my input let's say we source i have represented it over here right yes so what will happen have a look have a look for the first quarter for the first quarter the diode would be forward biased for this first quarter the diode would be forward biased and the output voltage would simply be equal to the input voltage right this is if we output the red color till the peak output would be equal to the input voltage and the capacitor will start to charge till where will it charge so it will charge to a maximum of vm you know this right so during the first quarter of the cycle first quarter what happens is the d is forward biased so if d is forward biased v naught is equal to v input yes yes the capacitor has charged capacitor charges to what we see which is equal to v output is equal to vm this has charged to the maximum value over here now when this charges so have a look the n side would now be at greater potential to the p side when the voltage has started to reduce yes after this so after this when the v source reduces have a look after the first cycle when the v source reduces right so v s minus v d minus v v c so this would become less than zero which means that v s is less than v c so the diode is reverse biased diode is reverse biased right so when this is an open circuited now the capacitor has a charge of vm it will not be discharging quickly because the time constant is considered to be high enough the gray far greater than the, the half of the cycle of the wave you've already seen in the uh, i believe in the clippers videos in the clampers videos or anything like that so anyways you know that so the diode is reverse bias so which means no current can flow in this side so the only current the capacitor has to discharge through the load so the capacitor has to discharge through the load it would provide a little current to it right till where so let's say from here it starts discharging so it starts discharging till here 
it has discharge till here right yes c discharges through rl yes yes now what happens after this have a look after this this is the charge with the capacitor the blue is your source after this v s becomes greater than v c and when this becomes greater than v c the diode is forward biased and when the diode is forward biased again the output is equal to the input the capacitor charges again and then further this cycle repeats further this cycle repeats this charge is again to vm the output is this thing right and then further it discharges again like this and similarly this repeats in such a manner so have a look are we matching it to that wave form yes we are so this was what this was under a loaded condition this was under a loaded condition yes yes if we have a non-loaded for, for instance wait 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 this this we we consider this discharging period this discharging period that is happening from here till here this is let's say considered to be t1 and this charging period is considered to be for instance uh, t2 or what have i done it like this or not so let me just uh, wait 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 where is it where have i shown it just give me a second the the discharging period is t1 and the charging period is t2 yes so let me write it over here so that we don't confuse it let's say the charging period the charging time is t1 and the no this is the discharging time the discharging time is t1 and the charging time is t2 such that that we have t1 plus t2 this would let's say be equal to t this is the period of this this pt is the period of this and why am i calling it the period because this is occurring as a periodic wave have a look charge discharge charge discharge charge again discharge again charge so this would repeat in such a manner as i've shown over there right yes so now what happens now what happens you know the steady state voltage of the capacitor the steady state voltage of a capacitor we know very well we know very well that steady state voltage of capacitor which means what we see at infinity this is equal to zero right this you know from your circuit analysis i have nothing to do with this over here i don't know this bp as well yes 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 this is not a requirement over here anyways so which means the equation i could write is like this vc of t is equal to vc of infinity plus vc of zero minus vc of infinity and it's whole multiplied to an exponential of negative t by tau so let's wait for the azan okay so let us put the values over here so we see of t at any instant of time so we see this is v0 plus you have vc of zero would be what vc of zero would be vm right let's say for instance this i am taking at t is equal to zero i am neglecting this cycle i am taking the steady state value let's say this i am taking at t equal to zero fine yes so we have vc of zero would be vm minus zero again exponential of negative t upon tau which implies what that i've got my value of the instantaneous capacitor voltage this is vm exponential of negative t upon tau the taylor series you can apply the taylor series you have you have studied it in your mathematics courses i don't know it right i'm sorry for that i'm very weak in mathematics i'll just copy it from here opening the exponential in terms of the taylor series in terms of its taylor series what do you have vc of t this would become equal to one vm times 1 minus t upon tau 
प्लस टी स्क्वायर अपॉन टू फैक्टोरियल टाउ स्क्वायर माइनस टी क्यूब अपॉन थ्री फैक्टोरियल टाउ क्यूब प्लस t to the power 4, 4 factorial tau to the power 4 minus plus and this thing would repeat, right? Yes. Now I want what? I want the output voltage to be constant. I want the output voltage to be constant, which means the discharging has to be as less as possible. which means the discharging should be as low as possible right and the discharging would be as low as possible if the time constant is as high as possible yes yes i want what output voltage to be constant so if this is the case my discharging should be less discharging should be less right so which means for this you need the tau to be high yes yes now if the tau is high we can ignore the higher order terms if the tau is high tau square would be much higher if tau is high tau cube would be even higher tau to the power 4 so we can ignore this right so which means that my vc of t would become equal to vm 1 minus t upon tau this is what i have done a linear approximation i have done my linear approximation by ignoring the higher order tau terms this is called linear approximation in your mathematics now you can you can uh, think of your minimum and maximum as well right c discharges in the interval t1 right so the v not minimum would be what v not minimum we see is of course the the v output right so v not minimum from here you could say is v m times 1 minus t1 upon tau why because the c discharges in t1 time c discharges in t1 time and similarly you know the v not maximum is the peak value of the rectified output v not maximum is equal to vm which is what which is the peak of the input and if the if it is at the ideal diode so it is equal to the peak of the source so i will write over here is that this is the peak of rectified output now the peak of rectified output would be equal to the peak of the source signal if you are considering an ideal diode right but if you are considering a silicon diode for instance so you would have the peak minus 0.7 for a germanium you would we have a you would have a peak minus 0.3 right yes so anyways now the peak to peak ripple peak to peak ripple is what peak to peak ripple is something important peak to peak ripple is something important okay peak to peak ripple peak to peak ripple this would be equal to v not maximum minus v not minimum do this for yourself what does it come out to be vm t1 upon tau vm t1 upon tau tau is what rc vm t1 upon rc r is what in this case we have considered it as rl yes yes is it clear till here it should be peak to peak ripple so now we can have one other thing t1 plus t2 is equal to t right yes but t1 is far greater than t2 have a look the discharging time is greater than t2 right so if i say like this that if t1 is far greater than t2 so t1 plus t2 could approximately be equal to t1 yes and t1 plus t2 is what it's it's t right so the t is approximately equal to t1 
so i could write it over here that the peak to peak v peak to peak is equal to what vm t where t is the discharging plus the charging time upon rl into c and, and t is the time period so i could further write it in terms of the frequency of this if the frequency is given f r l times c yes yes so i hope this is clear i hope this is clear now what is this peak to peak that i am saying so this peak to peak is this thing have a look if I have this one peak, then it reduces, then it increases, then it reduces, increases, decreases, increases, decreases. So this thing, this thing, this is the peak to peak voltage. The voltage difference between the maximum and the minimum. This is called what? This is called the peak to peak voltage. Right? Over here. Maximum minus minimum. Similarly, you will have another term is the average over here. So the average will lie somewhere in between the two. So that is the DC value. That is the average value. Right? Yes. So have a look. I can write it over here. V not average would be lying somewhere midway. Let's say I remove this. V not average will be lying somewhere in between the maximum and the minimum values. V not average will lie midway between maximum and minimum values. Right, so I would write it over here. It's for a straight line graph, of course. For a straight line, what do you do? Is you take the maximum value, you take the minimum value, and you divide by two. So I have approximated this sinusoidal to be a straight line as well. Although this is a sinusoid, this one is a straight line. We consider this as a straight line as well, and this is a straight line as well. So we do what? V not average. V not average. This is equal to Vm into 1 minus t by tau plus vm and this is whole divided by 2. The proper relation is given in the book in the Thomas L. Floyd book. This topic is not present in that uh, in that other book. What is that other book? Boylestard book. So I have printed out this for myself and where is it? This, the DC value comes out to be this. VDC is equal to 1 minus 1 minus 1 over 2 pi not 2 pi, 2 F RLC into VM into VM. Where VM is again what? As I told you over there. And this is overall would be approximately equal to Vm. You could finally just write it equal to Vm. Why? Because the Rc would be quite high. We've, we've all, we already want it to be high because the time constant is high so the capacitor does not discharge. So if this is high, 1 over this thing would be uh, 0, right? 1 over something or very high value would be 0. And yes. 1 over infinity would be 0 and then 1 minus 0 is 1 so it's approximately equal to Vm again right yes so from here you could also use the approximation for maximum and minimum from here you could also see that the V naught maximum this would be equal to what the average V naught average plus the V peak to peak divided by 2 Yes, you can do this. Why? Because have a look, the peak to peak is this interval. The average is lying midway. So you take the average, you take the upper half, peak to peak by 2, so you have the maximum value, right? Yes. Similarly, you have the minimum value, V naught minimum. This would be equal to V naught average and you come downward. So you have a minus V peak to peak divided by 2. You have a minus V peak to peak divided by 2. Yes, yes. And you have the values for that. So you have V naught average is Vm plus what is the case? Vm by 2 pi FRC. Vm by 2 FRC, RL, right? And similarly over here you have Vm 
माइनस वी एम बाई टू एफ आर एल सी एजेंटेड लाइक दिस इट इज इट इज नेक्स्ट रिपल वट इज रिपल सो रिपल इज द फ्लक्चुएशंस रिपल इज द फ्लक्चुएशंस दिस पिक टू पिक यू कुड से इन अदर टर्म्स इज अगेन द फ्लक्चुएशन राइट इट इज सो यू कुड से दैट दिस इज द रिपल so how do we do this so let's say we just have a little space on the board let's say we have a little space on the board okay yes so ripple so if i just put this graph downwards ripple if i subtract the average value from the peak to peak value so this graph will come downwards this graph will come downwards it would come like this although i have not drawn it properly but this graph is for what this is for the ripple which is for v not minus v not average v not minus v not average so this value is representing v peak to peak divided by 2 why because i have already shifted it downwards the overall peak to peak is this thing peak to peak is this thing and the average over this case is 0 approximately right yes so for a triangular wave form now you know this very well for a triangular wave form what do you have the ripple rms value for instance this is our ripple right v ripple so the rms value for this would be equal to what the maximum value divided by under the root 3 and the maximum value over here is what it's v peak to peak divided by 2 and further into under the root 3 and you have the values for this as well so which means this would further be equal to vm upon 2 under the root 3 f r c this is the harmonic rms ripple the harmonic rms ripple why because we are having a repeating wave form a fluctuating wave form so this is what this is the harmonic rms ripple the harmonic rms ripple yes yes and average is of course v not average it is equal to vm equal to vm right so the voltage ripple factor voltage ripple factor this is something of importance this is equal to what this is equal to the harmonic rms divided by harmonic rms divided by the dc value so which means i could write that the voltage ripple factor this is equal to 1 upon 2 under the root 3 f r l c yes yes so have a look if i take the value of c to be constant as well so the voltage ripple factor my voltage ripple factor comes inversely proportional to the load resistance this comes inversely proportional to the load resistance what does this mean this means what that it is suitable for a high resistance it means that if the resistance is high you can make use of the c filter if the load resistance is high you can make use of the capacitive filter because for high resistance the time constant is high and if the time constant is high the capacitor will not discharge quickly and we can get almost constant output voltage 
but if time constant is not high the fluctuation in the voltage would be very high let me write this somewhere in words this thing the voltage ripple factor is inversely proportional to the load resistance so the capacitive filter would be called efficient it would be good if the voltage ripple factor is low voltage ripple factor is what it's the fluctuation right it's the change between the maximum and the zero or between the maximum and the minimum voltage so the lower the fluctuations the efficient is your filter right so for that what do you do is this have a look this is inversely proportional to the load resistance by keeping of course the capacitor constant if you keep the load constant you could increase the value of the capacitor again one and the same thing interchangeably the tau that is the time constant of the capacitor is equal to rc so let's say i'm taking the capacitor value to be constant this is c this is taken to be constant so by changing the load what do you have this is suitable for a higher resistance this is suitable for a higher resistance if the resistance is high this would imply what you can make use of the capacitive filter because the high resistor the time constant is high this would imply that the tau would be high and if the time constant is high this means that the capacitor will not discharge capacitor will not discharge quickly once it has charged to the maximum value vm right yes and we can get if it is not discharging quickly this would imply what that we can get almost constant output voltage yes yes but if the time constant is not high what do you have the fluctuation in the voltage will be high this you know this you know so i believe i finished this over here one other thing you could say if you consider the load resistance to be constant you can see the capacitor value you should change the capacitance value to a high value if the capacitance is high again for the constant r capacitance is high tau would be high right if you write it in that terms or or you could say the voltage ripple factor is inversely proportional to the capacitance value but mostly we do it with this one so if the capacitance value is high over here have a look the time constant would be high again would be the same thing right i hope you have understood it so for this we would have this sort of a graph right now this output voltage graph that i draw over here we not this was for loaded condition the red v naught this is for loaded condition loaded condition means what that you have rl you have your load a current is flowing through the load if i say at no load if i say at no load if for instance i have this black color v naught this is for no load and no load i have told you the meaning what is the meaning of no load you know it very well right don't you yes you know it that the resistance would be infinite no load means what no load no load means that the resistance would be approximately infinity such that the current is approximately zero right so in that case have a look first the capacitor will charge in the same way to the maximum value of vm but now if the load is not present so it will not have anything to discharge through why because vc would not the, the v source would be reducing vc would be greater than vs but it would not have a part to discharge because the the current would not be allowed in this direction either and it would not have this part as well so which means what that the capacitor will retain its charge the capacitor will retain its charge at a constant value of vm at a constant value of vm so have a look for the ideal case this is the ideal case of it the, the filter circuit vm we have got a perfect dc graph but this is when this is for a no load condition of course practically we will not have any no load condition we will have loading yes yes 
But although we have achieved, we have achieved a perfect DC waveform. And I believe that this is clear. I believe this is clear. If you want me to revise it again, so why this happened? Because we, we, the VC is greater than VS after this. So it would need to discharge through some way, but there is no load. So you had no current could flow over here, right? And similarly, N to P current could also not flow. So which means the capacitor will retain its maximum value of Vm overall. And that is it. I believe that is clear. The mathematical manipulations could have been a little tricky, a little difficult to understand. And that is because of me, because I don't understand mathematics. I, I just get bored while doing the mathematical stuff. You would have noted it till here. So anything you would know, you would be doing this way better than me. The thing is, I just want to deliver the concept of the diode of the of the filter. The mathematics is not my part. Anyways, that is it for me. See you in the next lecture very soon, inshallah, with the topic of uh, Zena diodes. Still then, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. Do remember me in your prayers. Do subscribe to the channel. Goodbye.